folks, so a couple weeks ago I made a video and I said it was my last nebula of the season. But recently I've already started on the new season for nebulas, which is possible if you're willing to start in the middle of the night, which I did. And it took me five, at least five clear nights to capture the data I did so far. And I was going to go another night, but the rainy season is here now, and I don't know when I'm going to get another clear night, so I kind of cut it short. But what I did is I captured the, the Crescent Nebula and the Soap Bubble Nebula, and they're, they're kind of far apart, so I, I, I needed to do this um, on a wide field scope, so I used my Rasa telescope, and I want to show you how I brought out the soap bubble nebula because it's really faint and uh, it, it, it wouldn't have appeared without special attention in my image. So let, let, let me let me show you this. Okay, so I have 10 hours of data on the Crescent Nebula and the soap bubble. And let me show you what I've got here. This was six hours I captured of HA and this was four hours I captured of oxygen. I really wanted six hours of each, but I ran out of clear skies, and it's been raining a lot lately. So now the Crescent Nebula is easy to see in both, but the soap bubble is very difficult. It, it does exist in, in both of these, but it, it's, it's so faint. It was only just recently discovered maybe 13 years ago. So let me show you what it looks like without any processing. Let's go this way. This is the oxygen. It's easier to see in the oxygen because there's it's competing. There, there's not a whole lot of nebulosity um, around it like in uh, the HA that kind of drowns it out. So let's see. Let me scroll. I'm off to the bottom right here in my picture. I'm, I'm, uh, I put the, the picture at 100%. Can you see it? It's dead center right now. There it is. It's almost a perfect circle, which actually makes it easier for me to work with. Can you see it? It's rather faint. And it's one of those nebulas that's kind of see-through. So all I really need to do is figure out how I'm going to highlight the edge. And one way to do it was just to capture more data and hope that more at four hours or another six hours and hope that more data uh, makes it brighter. But sometimes you already hit up against that point of diminishing returns and more data won't help. But I don't know because I, I, I cut it short at four hours. Or another way is to create a very specific mask to highlight it. Now watch, look at this. See it? It's much brighter there. And uh, let's go one more. And it's even brighter there. So let me show you. Uh, I, there's lots of ways to highlight it and to, to bring that out. And I'm going to show you the way I did it, but I'll, if you have other ideas, uh, put them in the comments. I'm, I'm, I'm all ears for, for, for better methods. Oops. So I wasn't even going to attempt using the, um, the range, the range mask. Um, it's, it's just too faint and I'll never be able to do it. So what I thought, why don't I just run Starnet so at least get all the stars out of the way, make it a starless pick, and then I can clone stamp out all of the other, all of the other data and just highlight um, the soap bubble, which uh, is a little bit time consuming, but it, it, you got to put in some work sometimes. So let me show you how I went about this. Now, um, I already have a video on how to use Starnet. So I'm not going to repeat it here, but I'll put a link for it up here. It's the old way of using Starnet. It's actually built into PixInsight now. Um, but this is an old copy of PixInsight. I have a newer copy downstairs. So, but let me show you um, what it looks like after I ran Starnet. I, I'm sure a lot, of, most of you are familiar with Starnet by now. Um, and I, I ran Starnet on my oxygen data. So this is what it looks like. Um, without the stars. Starnet does a really good job and right now it's, uh, it's a little bit noisy and I don't like working with noisy mass. So I'm just gonna run, let's just work, what is this? Uh, Denoise multi-scale linear transform. Let's just run this really quick on my on my starless image. 
of oxygen. Creating mass with Starnet is my favorite thing to do now in processing. Okay, so it's a little bit smoother now. And um, so let me show you what I'm going to do now. I can see the soap bubble right there. Uh, the star, uh, without the stars, uh, it's a little easier to see. So now what I have to do is I'm going to bring up the histogram because I like that histogram. It's easy to uh, to get dark dark areas. So let's just drag this arrow here. I want some dark areas without without losing my soap bubble. Ooh, that's too much. Okay, I think that's enough. Do I still see my soap bubble? It's right there. I see the perfect circle. Okay, now If this is screwy, let me know, but I like my final result. I'll show you the color image at the very end here. Um, I'm going to make, I'm, I brought up clone stamp. I'll make this 250. That's the highest I can go. And now I'm just going to start making everything black, except my soap bubble. Okay, so I've got a mask now with just the soap bubble in there. So now, because um, the, the soap bubble is see-through, I want to punch a hole in it. And this is why I was glad it was uh, very round. This makes it easy. So let's go. I think, uh, I think 55. I just put this at 55 earlier. Okay, so 55 on clone stamp. Uh, softness, 50%. And I think uh, I already know this was a pretty good fit to punch a hole right in the middle. Maybe not perfect, but like I said, this is something you take your time, take your time on and you want to make it perfect. So there is my mask. Now let's drag it over to the oxygen. Oops. Oh, I want to make this mask um, the same as my oxygen grayscale. Okay, now let's drag it over. Okay, so let's turn up the brightness on, oops, on the soap bubble. Let's see if this works. Do you see that? It worked. Um, let's zoom in on it, wherever the heck it is. I think it's right about here. Let's execute that. Oh, there it is. You see that? I just brought it out. You can see how uh, my, my mask looks like a pretty good fit there. Let's go up to 100%. What if I did this again? That might be too much. I'm not sure. But here's, here, here's the thing. You have a, a couple of options. Now, now, I chose to actually do this in my oxygen and my HA, but I was wondering, could I have just combined the data first and then just do it on the final image? I probably could have done that. I'm not sure how it would have turned out, but uh, I just m made the decision to, to do it up front before I combine those two filters. And the other thing is, because this is a very faint nebula, um, you know, I could keep going and, and go crazy on it and just keep making it brighter and brighter and brighter. But you don't want to make this as bright as the Crescent Nebula. You want people to know this is a very faint nebula. So in my final color picture, it, I left it very faint because I want people to know, yeah, you know, this required a little effort. This is a very faint nebula, what you're seeing right now. Normally, you're not going to even see it if people forget it's even there and don't, don't process for it. So um, I made that decision to make it leave it very faint. So anyway, I hope you found this useful. Maybe you think I'm crazy the way I did it, but you know what? It worked. I like my, my final result. 
And uh, that, that's all I got to share, folks. I will see you guys later. Folks, so hello, folks. So today, hello, folks. So a couple, yeah, I don't know. Okay, here we go. I'm sweating. Hello, folks. So a couple of weeks ago, I made a video that I, I said. I call it the new season because uh, 